Hey, it's Random Code here, and today I just want to showcase a little program I created, which is a simple web application where we can kind of like have a list, in this case, of fruits. I can then add a fruit, let's say apple. I can then add another component, let's say another apple. That's not very creative. I can add some more stuff. I can say, let's remove this one, let's remove the first one, let's remove this one. One left, which can't be removed. So that's the basic concept being able to add components and then delete them individually. So inside my HTML, just a very simple setup, I have these components with a lot of IDs, which I'm not going to go through all of them, but if you want to have a look at the code yourself, there'll be a link in the description. But more interestingly enough, I am using jQuery, which is a library using a JavaScript library, which makes it quite a bit easier and quicker to do some fast and a bit more interesting so we can work on actually the functionality instead of just writing a lot of JavaScript, because plain JavaScript could be a bit dull. But using jQuery, we have a, when the document is ready, we call this function, which is called a remove fruit event and add fruit event, which is two functions that set up my two buttons, my add button and my remove button. So my add button, which simply takes the component with class add, on click, do this function, create a fruit element, which is a clone of the first fruit element, which is my, have a div with the class fruit, contains my input field and my button. So like these two components and then clone them and then set the value of my input to nothing. So even though I had some input in the first one, when I create a new component, it's going to be empty. And I then add them to my div inputs, which is kind of like a div containing all the, for now it's just a div here containing just one root setup, but later on will contain multiple. And I then call a toggle button, toggle remove button, which is the thing that allows this button to be unclickable when there's only one component. We then have the function remove fruit event, which is simply on any kind of dot fruit. So it's a component with the fruits class, which means it inside anything in here. So anything, these components, which on click contains the remove dot remove class as well. We then call this function, which simply takes this part, of this element, it's the parents of it, and remove it. So in this case, my button remove is part of a fruit element, which is kind of like all of this. And then, then click this, it goes to the parent, which is a div containing the input field and the button, and remove both of them. This way we are able to remove itself and more, kind of like the parent. And again, we call the toggle remove button method, which just simply checks if we have the length of the dot fruit, so the div class with fruits, if we have more components of one, we disable it, otherwise we disable false, or if it's not, disable true. So simply check if there's more or less than one component left in my dot fruit class. So just a relatively simple setup, which with jQuery makes it quite a bit easy to just access all my components and then create this relatively simple setup which looks quite nice at least i think so if you enjoyed this video please leave a like and subscribe and i wish you all a wonderful